When you think of tanks, you probably picture a massive war machine rolling across a battlefield. Images of giant caterpillar tracks, gun turrets, and thick armor come to mind. But have you ever wondered what it's like to operate one of these beasts? Welcome back to Get Around How, the channel that brings you everything you want to know about the newest and most interesting vehicles on the planet. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notifications button so you don't miss a thing. Today, we're taking you inside the cockpit of a tank to give you a first-hand look what it's like to drive, shoot, and destroy everything in your path while operating the most powerful land weapon in human history. Believe it or not, civilians with regular driver's licenses are allowed to drive tanks in many places. But climbing into one of these mega machines in combat takes a lot more than that. Enlisted soldiers need an ASVAB combat score of at least 87 to serve on a tank crew, and over 20 weeks of training in everything from weapons operation to geospatial analysis. Plus, before you can take control of the actual driving of the tank, you'll need to have experience with all the other crew functions of the vehicle. The gunner is responsible for aiming and firing the tank's main gun. This is no small task, as the tank's cannon can fire a shell weighing up to 120 pounds, and can destroy targets from over a mile away. The gunner uses a targeting system that's a lot like a video game. They can zoom in and out, adjust for distance and wind, and even fire on the move. The role of the gunner is crucial in tank warfare, as they must accurately identify and engage enemy targets, while maneuvering the tank through rugged terrain. Gunners work closely with the driver and the rest of the crew to coordinate their actions and stay safe in battle. They communicate using headsets and must be able to give clear and concise instructions to their fellow crew members in high-pressure situations. Gunners do all this while in the less than comfy turret basket, bumping along on the right side toward the front. Gunners must maintain laser-like focus and accuracy despite the never-ceasing movement and noise. That can be exhausting and stressful, especially if you're deployed in a combat zone for an extended period of time. The loader is the gunner's right-hand man. They sit in the turret basket too, toward the back. Loaders are responsible for making sure the tank's main gun is always loaded and ready to fire, which involves handling shells that can weigh up to 120 pounds and loading them into the gun's breech. But it's more than just loading guns. The loader's job is highly technical and requires a deep understanding of the tank's weapon system and ammunition. They must be able to decide in a split second what type of shell is needed for any given situation, load it with perfect accuracy, and communicate any issues with the rest of the crew. Sometimes the loader, along with the commander, operates the two machine guns on the top of the turret. But on the M1A2 Abrams, they have to open the hatches and fire the guns manually, so it's mainly for attacking infantry. The commander in a tank is another turret rider, and their role is to lead and direct the rest of the crew in combat. They're responsible for the overall operation of the tank, including directing the tank's movements, coordinating with other units, and communicating with officers. They do this with several periscopes and a joystick-controlled independent thermal night vision viewer. They also monitor the tank's various systems and its position on an integrated display. The main focus of a tank commander is situational awareness, constantly scanning the environment to assess threats, keeping track of friendly and enemy forces, and ensuring the safety of their crew. Plus, the commander plays a role in directing the tank's weapon systems by communicating with the gunner and loader to ensure the tank's main gun is aimed and fired correctly, and directing the use of secondary weapons. The driver is the only member of the tank's crew that doesn't sit in the turret basket. The driver sits in the front section of the hull right below the main gun. This super snug space has a form-fitting bucket seat that reclines like a dentist's chair. Despite the tight quarters, it's the most comfortable seat in the tank. From their primo seat, the driver is responsible for operating the tank's propulsion system and moving through the environment. They have to operate the tank's tracks with a complex set of pedals and levers that control the speed and direction of the tank, and steer the tank with a motorcycle-style handlebar with a grip throttle for acceleration. The brake is a bit more familiar. It's on the floor and looks kind of like a car brake. The driver also uses a range of tools to identify and navigate obstacles and threats. The driver has three periscopes, 
also known as vision blocks, and can swap out a night vision sensor for late night operations. The driver's digital instrument panel, called Driver's Integrated Display, or DID, provides navigational data and info on speed, fluid levels, and engine performance. The driver is also responsible for the overall maintenance and upkeep of the tank. That includes routine maintenance tasks like checking the oil levels and more in-depth repairs when needed. Driving a tank is a lot more intense than driving a car. You can feel the weight of the massive vehicle, and you have the roar of the diesel engine as your non-stop companion. With modern tanks able to reach speeds of 45 miles per hour and navigate challenging terrain, it's a rough ride for everyone. No crew member has an easy ride in a tank. It's cramped, dirty, and disorienting. The crew is jostled and thrown against the sides as the tank moves over rough terrain, leaving them bruised and sore. Temperatures inside can climb past 100 degrees. Tank missions can last anywhere from four hours to several days. And yes, when you're stuck in a tank for days on end, you have to deal with bodily functions in there too. Needless to say, the inside of a tank usually smells terrible. When the main gun is fired, the crew is less than two feet away from an explosion capable of propelling the entire 72-ton tank backward if the brakes aren't engaged. Tank commanders sometimes have to stick their heads out of the hatch when the main gun is fired, and the shockwave is strong enough to rattle your teeth and flatten your eyebrows. It's deafeningly loud, and the crew wears helmets with built-in sound-reducing headphones and speakers. Especially one engaged in combat without ear protection is a sure way to get permanent hearing damage. Being in an enclosed metal box for hours on end can be extremely disorienting, especially since your view of the outside world is usually only through periscopes. The driver can open the hatch above them and put their head out when they aren't in a combat situation, but if the hatch is closed, their vision is cut into three blocky views of the landscape directly in front of them. They rely on information from the commander about what is happening outside of their small field of vision. It's definitely not comfortable, but most tank crews can agree that riding in a tank is one of the most unique, exciting experiences of their lives. The close quarters and constant communication result in a tight-knit group of comrades, and nothing feels quite as powerful as firing weapons that can obliterate a target in the next zip code. Would you cram yourself into that driver's seat for a chance to drive a tank? Let us know in the comments below. Now watch these videos. You'll love them.